the idea is to have this space in which it feels like natural to work in. To create a new molecule, I would start by adding atoms. So that's what I'm going to do. I just grab the add atom tool and then I can start adding atoms. In this case, as mentioned here, carbon atom. And what you can see is that right away, if the atoms are within bonding distance, they will start bonding. All right. And then once you've created a molecule, let's say this is the one I wanted to build, um, I can start doing some measurements on it. So I can just grab the, the, this tool that allows me to add electrodes and I will add an electrode, a positive one, and a negative electrode here. So, um, and what's interesting is that if I start adding more atoms, like a more complex structure, I can see evolve here. And if I carry on, I actually see appearing some different modes, uh, which is very interesting. And right away I get an insight on what the physics is. If I were to, for instance, grab the remove atom gun and remove this one right away, Oh. I, I go back to yeah, a to one transmission yeah, because yeah, this yeah, is it's just a, a single wire. All right. Exactly. And then I can just get rid of all of this because who doesn't like <laughs> fire and explosions? <laughs> Here I got a graphing sheet with the hole in the center. I can just print it in my virtual world and bring it here. If I, if I put some <laughs> electrodes, I can start seeing some transmission. You can you can through. you measure? Uh, can you put electrodes, and this will work? Yeah, yeah. This is actually what I just oh, did. Jesus. This is like the negative electrode, okay. and this is ah, the positive okay, okay. electrode right okay. here. And this is the wow. uh, applied. Board. Exactly. Yeah. So, what if we wanted to make transport calculation? Then that wouldn't mean anything because this thing would never appear in life. So what I can do, sorry Peter, I'm going that direction. I, I, I moved. Oh. I can just grab the relaxation tool, which is an old school radio because who doesn't like to relax with a bit of music? And I can ask for a relaxation, which is ah. uh, going to minimize the energy of this uh, this structure. And now you get a nice graphene, uh, graphene cycle, the honeycomb. Okay, so this is graphene. It's one atom thick. It's a material which conducts electricity extremely well. And we want to make use of it for new electrons. We know that we are doing something which is pretty okay, but at the same time we can do calculations so fast that, that it actually follows what we are doing, basically our motion. When we start to move atoms about, we will see more or less in real time how the, for instance, conductance will change as we do it. We want to get some intuition about it by playing in virtual space. So basically, um, what we wanted to do is take this uh, model, this physical model of the sticks and balls and make it more malleable, something you could really play with uh, so that you can actually get this intuition uh, Mess was mentioning earlier. Um, and to do that, we, uh, we created the VR software in which you can basically create any structure you want from the bottom up, so adding the atoms one by one in a hopefully intuitive manner, um, and then the atoms will create bonds as they should normally in the, the real world. And once you have those structures, you can um, quickly obtain the transport properties of those structures still in a user-friendly uh, manner. We It is very important, I think, to emphasize that because that is really what enables anyone to gain intuition rather than just specialists, which is also important for education purposes, outreach, and so on and so forth, while retaining the accuracy of the transport calculation, which is also important if we want to make that uh, valuable as a physics tool and a physics research mean. I'm convinced that this, of course, will be highly useful for teaching. It will be a blast for outreach, but I think even a seasoned scientist with years and years of experience, I in ways not, I'm still struggling sometimes uh, uh, understanding these three-dimensional complicated atomic structures and and uh, and relating to them to what uh, what properties physical properties we can calculate. So uh, why don't we try to fire it up and uh, see uh, what it can do? So that's a commercial. Virtual reality headset you got there, right? Yes, okay. it's the HTC Vive, um, and uh, yes, so it's a, a fairly affordable 
uh, VR headsets uh, with uh, the computer is more or less the minimal configuration and it runs pretty smoothly. The idea is to have this space in which it feels like natural to work in. So that is a light colors and then using tools, as Peter mentioned, mentioned the idea of a workshop, because it's what's most natural to use. If you want to perform any action, you would use the associated tool, and this is exactly the same thing here. So typically, to create a new molecule, I would start by adding atoms. So that's what I'm going to do. I just grab the add atom tool, and then I can start adding atoms. In this case, as mentioned here, carbon atom. And what you can see is that right away, if the atoms are within bonding distance, they will start bonding, right? And then I can then move around, move them around very easily, or the entire molecule. So try to say again, so how do how do the how are the bonds formed? Typically, uh, every time you add a new atom, uh, the covalent radii are going to be checked, as well as the valence of the involved atoms so that they don't bond too many times, and if they are within bonding distance, oh. uh, they will create a new bond. So typically, if I add this one, it will add. And also, I have some yeah. uh, correction added so that the position of the atom is roughly the bonding distance wherever you click. So if I put it very close to this one, it will still appear as a distance that is closer to what would appear. Right, but you basically reduce the distance and also information about what the individual atom is likely to do to, exactly. to decide whether there's a bond or not. Exactly. And then once you've created a molecule, let's say this is the one I wanted to build, um, I can start doing some measurements on it. So I can just grab the, the, this tool that allows me to add electrodes and I will add an electrode, a positive one, and a negative electrode here. So you and send in the current in one end and pull out the current in the other end. And right away, I get some oh. measurements of the the transmission of the electron through the device uh, as a function of the um, applied voltage. Um, and what's interesting is that if I start adding more atoms, like a more complex structure, I can see evolve here, and if I carry on, actually see appearing some different modes, uh, which is very interesting. And right away I get an insight on what the physics is. So you can you can literally put in atom by atom and immediately see how the uh, your kind of this nanoscale electronic component reacts, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And those are actual calculation uh, performed uh, in real time. They are not just mock-ups. This is not just one structure that is pre-made, I really can do whatever I want with it. Which is also very important uh, to us because that's what will allow you to experiment and get a real intuition of what's happening. Can you remove the atoms? Yes, if I were to, for instance, grab the remove atom gun and remove this one right away, oh. I, I go back to yeah, a to one the transmission yeah, because yeah, this yeah, is just a simple way. Bond. All right. Exactly. And then I can just get rid of all of this because who doesn't like <laughs> fire and explosions? <laughs> so you have a you have furnace to uh, burn away yes. molecules you don't need. That's nice. For, for making it faster. You also have a coffee cup. Yes, I do have a coffee cup because we're Oops, physicists. It's me. <laughs> and uh, coffee is the fuel of physics. Okay. So we have a grumpy cat cup. Okay. And, uh, well, it's... Uh, well, it's empty at the moment. I drink too much coffee. Let's throw that away. Um, <laughs> yes. But like, let's assume as well that you don't want this mock-up structure. You want to work with something more complex that would still take time to create in such an environment. Well, what you can do is come here and load some pre-made structures. So like, for instance, here I've got a graphing sheet with the hole in the center. I can just print it in my virtual world and bring it here. Right. Okay. And right away, uh, that, that that's, 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 oh, that's a system sorry. we are actually very interested in uh, at the DTU for several reasons. So, by by making a hole in a graphing sheet like that, you make some uh, some very interesting changes in electronic properties. But you can also think of this as a filter that filters, uh, for instance, uh, 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 ions uh, for for desalination. Uh, so there's actually many things you can use. 
And right away, if I, put some, right. If, I, if, I, if, I, if I put some <laughs> electrodes, I can start seeing some transmission. You can, you, can you measure, uh, can you put electrodes in this? Will it work? Yeah, yeah, this is actually what I just oh, did. Jesus. This is like the negative electrode, okay. and this is ah, the positive okay, electrode okay. right okay. there. And this is the wow. uh, applied voltage. Wow, try to, can you, um, can you remove, but that's hydrogen sitting at the edges, isn't it? Yes. I thought you could only, only you could only do carbon atoms. Uh, for for now, those are just considered as if they were carbon. Okay, so okay. this is not accurate. But at some point, we will reach the state where uh, can you we'll have remove any one of the carbon atoms at the hole just to? I'd like to see what happens. Yes, and I'd like to see the measurements at the same time if you can look up. Wow! And you see that you yeah, have yeah, yeah, a, a huge impact. change. Yes. Okay, it's also uh, a huge if I, damage. If I, if, I, if, I, if I remove there, then all of this channel is removed, and the only yeah, channel that's yeah, left is this one. So yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. it has such a dramatic impact. That's very cool. Well, we can remove this, this little one. It's that doesn't matter. Cool. Wow, that's amazing. All right, la last but not least, um, let's discard this. You don't burn your hands. Um, so let's try and make a little carbon cycle here. It's a bit wonky. I can then add some hydrogen. So that's a periodic table you have there, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, you have all these table atoms, so that is uh, all till the end of the lanthanide. Nice. Yeah. After that, we figured out that having radioactive elements that you can hardly even get in real life is probably not that interesting, so we didn't implement it. But let's say you've made this cycle. It's Nah, it's not really nice. You can try to it's fix not it. Right. A bit. It's, it, it in, in nature, it would look like this. So exactly. Yeah. So what if we wanted to make transport calculation? Then that wouldn't mean anything because this thing would never appear in life. So what I can do? Sorry, Peter, I'm going that there. I, I, I moved. So. I can just grab the relaxation tool, which is an old school radio because who doesn't like to relax with a bit of music? And I can ask for a relaxation, which is ah. uh, going to minimize the energy of this. Uh, this structure and now you get a nice graphene uh, graphene cycle the honeycomb so by structure. minimizing the energy you mean that since if the bonds are stretched too much or too little are kind of then it will try to uh, get all the the chemical bonds to have their natural length exactly. and that is a point where the whole system has the lowest total energy so lowering the energy means that that all the springs that you are, are, are allowed to find their natural zero point Exactly, so that's, and that so that looks like it, it been seen and not like the wonky thing you had before. But we're doing this project because we are, are scientists and we are struggling with these things ourselves. But we also uh, have a strong urge to communicate what we're doing, and also it's our job to teach. So we believe that we are exploring this to see how effective it is to change the uh, the way that we can teach nanotechnology and work with nanotechnology even at a sophisticated level. So our ambition is that the calculations that you get here are state-of-the-art, which means that we are coupling uh, this to uh, uh, to supercomputers, and so we have a collaboration going with Oracle, who uh, have some uh, uh, very powerful cloud computing. And what our goal is, is to couple this to, uh, to uh, uh, instant but very powerful calculations that give us accurate feedback on the changes that are done in, on the atomic scale. Now, normally, you, you make it, you, you have a simulation, you set it up, and then sometime later, the supercomputer had time to give you the feedback. But we think that by getting the feedback instantly, we start to work and think in a different way.